Hi, my name is Tessie Marion. I'm one of the co-founders of Inequality. This is Simon Lapsher, and also co-founder and our marketing lead, Alex Min. And today, can you go forward <laughs> the slide? <laughs> yeah, we will be talking about uh, first principles and Bitcoin and the cross chain world. As we all know, um, it's a war out there. Bitcoin and you know other projects, and so here we're making a point. Um, so Bitcoin initially, as everybody knows, uh, was a response to the financial crisis in 20, uh, 2009, right? And so um, Bitcoin is the alternative to a financial system. It's actually the first uh, non-systematic uh, money, which means if a system goes down, if a, if a country goes down, the money is still there, right? That's the only value actually that exists in that world. Um, and what it has created, it has created freedom for people to interact globally, peer to peer, and it's an open system. And as we all know, I'm not telling you anything new here. And um, so therefore, there are certain properties, um, and these properties allow the individual to transact without the intermediary, so the agency has been shifted from the institutions to the individual, right? So we have global, global uh, money and we have um, uh, total access, we have censorship resistance, we have this intermediation, there's no, nothing in the middle between the two parties and uh, nobody can allow or permit you or has to uh, permit anybody to uh, take part and it's uh, private pseudonymous, right? Um, so this is the first application on the blockchain, as we know. Uh, the first Bitcoin, the first blockchain was the Bitcoin blockchain, and the first application is money. Um, and you know, taking some of these properties, of course, it was a natural progression that um, taking these properties to uh, add something else to the internet um, makes total sense, right? And so. For example, now we have the DeFi, uh, decentralized finance, and everything is in its infancy, right? So um, yes, it can be very scary, um, but it is just the the innovation um, taken from uh, additional properties on the blockchain, and now starting to experiment, allowing, for example, here DeFi uh, access to people who hadn't had access before. That is not necessarily financial inclusion as we talk about in the bigger sense, because right now it's really something that's used in the developed world, in the, in the world of uh, you know, people having already um, you know, a privileged, and so privileged uh, people are playing with money now. So it's also kind of a legacy system transfer to the blockchain, right? So this is not uh, the innovation I would want to see, um, it's just a start, right? And so um, the DAOs, another example uh, of an innovation um, that has taken some part of the blockchain uh, values and now uh, use it for uh, decentralizing and collaboration. Uh, DAOs are also uh, part of like tokenization and, and using tokens to decentralizing projects. Um, and then NFTs digital asset ownership, fractal ownership, all these kind of things. Again, uh, this is all around tokenization. So these are all the beginnings of, of innovations, right? This is not the end. And so what is the, the, the problem right now is, um, so all these projects have done a pretty good um, deal with um, uh, creating their own wallets, creating their own ecosystem, um, you know, having um, certain access, and others don't, you know. But um, the problem is really that they're all chain-specific experiences. There's not one wallet. Um, every user trying something else has to learn something new. So it's really a, a barrier. And for, for new users, this is a usability nightmare, more or less, because it makes it very um, insecure. So the quality, um, well, that's where liquidity comes in. Um, we have created a wallet, a single access point into this world of the different chains. And not saying that they're all like, you know, um, the, the solution forever, but now it's really about 
connecting all these different uh, value propositions from um, a least centralized to a most centralized, um, and and allowing the different communities to access the values that are created by other communities, right? So if you have uh, Bitcoin and you want to get into DeFi, you can actually do this, right? You can stake somewhere else. You can do all these things. So, um, and I'm handing it over. Here. Thanks. Yeah, so the idea with Liquality is to provide an informed choice. So as a user, you're going to be picking your path. And, and so if we focus, for example, on Bitcoin, you know, Liquality offers more than uh, just Bitcoin, but when we look at the Bitcoin ecosystem, you know, you can if you want to be just a Bitcoin holder, right, a holder that you're you have your hot wallet and you're using it for Bitcoin browser payments, you can use Liquality to do that, right? But as you know, as we go further down the right and you give you know you, you basically give away some trade-offs, like you give away some censorship resistance, you give away some representation of the, the sound money, then you start getting other benefits, right? So that's what RSK is trying to do, and, and you can use applications like Sovereign or Money on Chain inside, you know, through Liquality to basically trade and, and lend your money and lend your Bitcoins. And so, you know, as uh, the, the idea here is to provide the full gamut. You can also then go to Ethereum and use Badger, which is basically, a, you know, yield interest with your Bitcoin, right? And interest bearing Bitcoin. Uh, and then you can also, to the most, most extreme, you can also tokenize your Bitcoin into Binance if you want to, or lend it on, you know, a centralized, ex centralized exchange. The idea here is that we should provide as a wallet, first of all, and in general in crypto, a unified experience for all of crypto where people don't have to think about in general you know what what am i do what what blockchain am i using what what is the you know what what are the uh, different components of this I, I just have this single interface single unified interface where i can have all access to all of these crypto applications uh, and so how do we as how do we think about unifying this uh, user experience there's five main components. The first is a chain abstraction layer. So uh, basically an open source protocol uh, to have interoperability. So right now we have RSK and Bitcoin and whenever we add Liquid, for example, it will become interoperable with everything else. We provide a single user experience as well and uh, where you have all of your assets all in one single view. Uh, then we uh, built injection standards. So basically the idea that regardless of which chain you're interacting with, it's the same type of interaction pattern. So you're not dealing with different interaction patterns. It, we also built native cross-chain swaps. So one-click swaps, uh, optimizing for trustlessness. Uh, and so you can go from one blockchain to the other without sacrificing for security or privacy. And then we built a transaction automation capability that allows us to have complex multi-transaction workflows so that we can go from one blockchain to the next and do many different transactions all in one single user click and incentivize developers to build all of these transactions on top of the wallet. So be becoming the first open source wallet to have developers be really building on top. Um, and so this brings about some dangers, of course, if we're oversimplifying the experience, that means that people don't really understand the trade-offs and they're seeing Binance you know, the, as, as, as using the same as, as Bitcoin. So we have to educate the, the user uh, in general as a space. That can lead to centralization. So if you're using you know, Bitcoin and Binance for yield, you're not fully aware of the risks that that can, can bring. Uh, and so that that's, you know, could be uh, pretty catastrophic if not done right. And then, of course, if we're opening up as an open source wallet, that can be, bring bugs uh, because people are putting in malicious code. So we have to find ways of mitigating that. Uh, and uh, Eamon will we'll, uh, close it up. Cool, yeah, so even though it might seem counterintuitive, you know, we really believe that a unified cross-chain experience is actually good for Bitcoin. You might be wondering why, right? Well, so what we've seen is like, even though this activity might be happening on other chains, as stewards that offer atomic swaps, what we've seen is that actually the number of on-chain Bitcoin transactions goes up, right? And so, uh, for example, like 90% of our swaps even though they might go be going in and out of Bitcoin, like 90% of swaps have Bitcoin as one side of the trade. 
Um, and so, yeah, of course, with more on-chain transactions, we incentivize um, you know miners to secure the network better and sustain the network as well. Yeah, and so I guess uh, just bringing it back to the first principles, right? I mean, as as we start to develop and define what this cross-chain world looks like. Um, it, it's important that we think about you know, the first principles, right? The things that Tassie was talking about, about you know, Bitcoin's characteristics of censorship resistance, open access, uh, you know, all, all of the above. Um, so yeah, I guess you know, as we continue to build these tools and layer twos and applications, it's important that we consist consistently think about you know, the Bitcoin uh, first principles. And so with that, thank you for uh, listening to our chat. And um, yeah, we're hiring as well. So if you guys are interested, come say hi. Thank you. We have four minutes for questions. If anybody has questions, uh, just raise your hand and I'll, uh, I'll grab you. So uh, first question. Uh, which stage of maturity or deployment your transaction automation? specifically for EDM compatible to EDM compatible chain uh, to trigger a specific function and contract on another chain. And is it just one way or is it two way? And what stage is it at? Yeah, great question. So the question was, what stage of uh, transaction automation are we in uh, for that capability that I mentioned? Uh, and so currently we're developing the SDK. So we have the automation uh, or, so the wallet's open source, you could do it today if you wanted to, it's not very developer friendly yet. So what we're focusing on right now is basically building the SDK for that automation so that any developer can build in features inside the wallet. And once we do, because we have the chain abstraction layer, uh, we're doing it through the chain abstraction layer, which is basically a simplified way of talking to any chain. Uh, you'll be able to do it for any of the chains that we support. So all the the, basically what the transaction automation capability implies is that you can give a workflow of many different transactions across any of the chains that we support and, it'll, and the wallet will execute it in the background. Got it. And one more clarifying question. Uh, is it really tied uh, to the wallet usage or can it be used as a bridge like any swap? where I want to, for example, send from the game to the chain a transaction to, let's say, have a delegated credit uh, call on Polygon to send funds to, through another bridge to maybe some user on our chain or elsewhere, or through uh, OTX, newly today announced support for Polygon uh, on ramp yeah. for the user to get the funds in their uh, okay, it's basically, does it, is it tied heavily with your wallet or can it be used for cross-chain uh, transaction? Yeah, so essentially the question is, is it tied to the wallet or not? And, and you gave a few really good use cases. It, the, the, it, can, it can be separate, uh, but we're starting with it being tied to the wallet. And the reason why is because when we're triggering a transaction automation on multiple chains, you need a way uh, to sign in all of these different chains. And so unless you have a signer somewhere, right, uh, your own node maybe, uh, which is, is possible if you run it, I guess, if you run the liquidity wallet locally and you tie it to your own node, it's possible. Uh, but the, the, the beautiful thing about the liquidity wallet is that it has the ability to sign in all of these different chains. And so when you talk about you know, going from Polygon uh, you know, going from let's say a, a layer one to Polygon, uh, putting into you know depositing into an, a delegated a credit credit delegation market, then withdrawing that and using that LP proof uh, for something else. All of that has to be signed. All of those are transactions, and so you need a wallet-like functionality, and that's why we're building it inside of the wallet. My personal vision uh, is that wallets will overtake. Uh, the interface for all of the protocols. So I think the protocol front ends will disappear because the wallet signing capabilities will be so powerful uh, that you won't want to have, uh, you, you will need to have all of these automations and they will need to be done through any, so, something that can sign uh, and that should better be a wallet that is very secure. Got it. And is your wallet like a smart contract based? Is it 
that's that's time for the questions. He'll be around. Thank you. We can talk. Definitely. We can talk later. Yeah, talk offline. Uh, I'm gonna use my bully pulpit and ask a question for you. Uh, when liquid? Yeah, when liquid. So we have. So the liquid team actually started the integration, and it's probably like halfway through. Yeah. And, and then they got a little distracted with Marina, uh, which is their browser wallet. I, I think I don't know, but I think it has components of the liquid wallet, wallet inside Marina. Um, and so I, we basically just need someone uh, who can, uh, you know, who's familiar with Liquid, who can integrate it. Again, we're open source, so we're, we actually just got uh, interest from a Lightning developer to, to implement Lightning. Uh, and then Liquid, you know, it's waiting for a developer to come in. Uh, we're now going to be growing a lot. And, and so I, if, if we have, you know, if it becomes a priority and we can do it in-house, we'll do it. If not, we'll take in an integration from someone that uh, wants to do it.